Well, hello and welcome to MC 180 Fundamentals of Public Relations. My name is Joy Gordon and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. This is the introductory video lecture and there's several things I want to accomplish today to get you oriented how you can be successful in this course. I want to give you the course description and objectives, how you earn points in this course, we'll talk about the online environment, the importance of being timely, and finally, working with your textbook. Let's start with the course description. This course in the university uh, handbook is described as contemporary persuasive social science principles, processes, and issues involved in the management of communications between an organization and its publics. As a 100 level course, it is a survey course, and that means we're going to cover a lot of different topics and issues associated with the field of public relations. There's several objectives to achieve in this course, and after taking this course, I would hope that you would really understand the role of public relations and what it has in organizations and society, social responsibility, diversity, and ethical issues associated with public relations, the process of public relations from research to evaluation, the strategies and tactics that public relations professionals use, how it's applied across multiple fields, including health, government, and nonprofits, and the history of public relations, how it got to be where it is today. Now, you're probably really concerned with how do you earn points in this course. This course has a total possible of 1,000 points, and that is formed from 16 quizzes, one for each chapter, and three exams. And there are no courses, no points for attendance, uh, there's no extra points, it's all entered into the system, and there's definite cutoffs. If you are to earn 90% of the 1,000 points, 900 points, then you'll be assigned an A at the end of the semester. 800 points is a B, 700 points is a C, and 600 points is a D. So between 16 quizzes and three exams, a total of 19 assignments. That constitutes all 1,000 points that are possible in this course, and that's how grades are earned. So I often have students ask, are you going to drop a quiz? Well, no, I'm not going to drop a quiz because every point you earn contributes towards your accumulation of points, and your final grade is entirely dependent upon the accumulation of points in the semester. So let's talk about those quizzes. Well, quizzes are all online, whether you're taking this course web-based or whether you're taking this course in a seated format, all quizzes are online. And all quizzes are 20 multiple choice questions. They are exclusively from the text. So all quizzes are just based on the text. And there's a definite schedule for when quizzes are due. In this introductory folder where you found this video, you will also find a schedule. And that schedule outlines what quizzes are due for the entirety of the semester. And all of your assignments are available from the beginning of the semester. And you are welcome to work ahead of schedule, especially if you know you have an upcoming business trip or vacation planned. You can always work ahead of the schedule. But the deadlines are firm, and that's why the schedule is provided. So it's very important that you're timely. So look in the introduction folder, find that schedule file, print it off, and keep it handy during the semester. Exams will be either 55 or 60 multiple choice questions. Now, whereas the quizzes were based exclusively on the textbook material, the exams cover both the textbook material and the lectures. So, our first exam covers Foundations of Public Relations, which is chapters 1 through 6. The second exam looks at chapters 7 through 11, which examines the process of public relations. And the final unit of the textbook, which is chapters 12 through 16, constitutes exam number 3. And the third exam is not comprehensive. It only covers unit 2, which talks about public relations today and tomorrow. So, once again, 16 quizzes, there are 20 items each, and there's one due for each chapter, and all students take quizzes online. The exams cover both the material in the textbook and in the video lectures, and they have more time associated with taking those exams, and there's three of them, 
and the final exam is not comprehensive. Now about taking quizzes and exams. There are some security measures put in place. All quizzes are drawn from a pool of questions and they are timed. So once you enter a 20 item quiz, you will have exactly 30 minutes to complete that assignment. You can have your book, your notes, internet access, whether you're taking it the, the class seated or online, all of those materials are available to you during quizzes and exams. However, do not think you can be successful in this course by looking up answers at the time of the quiz. Successful students in this course understand the material before they sit down to take a quiz because all assignments are timed and every student gets a random selection of questions from a large pool. So I want to encourage you to be successful in this course by understanding the material before you enter a quiz or exam because they are timed and you're only allowed to enter them once. So that's how the system works. So the online environment is very important. And this is a screen that shows you what your K-State online, um, what this course looks like. And the arrow there is pointing to announcements. All important announcements will be posted there on that front page. And anything I put on announcements is something you're kind of expected to know. Also on the online environment, I want to point out files and content. Under files and content, you will find modules. And in the modules, you found this introductory folder, but you will also find a folder for each and every chapter this semester. In this case, I show you the introductory folder, and the second arrow is pointing to that schedule that I pointed out earlier to you. Also, all of the slideshows will be in your chapter folders, including this introductory slideshow, and you have the option of printing those out. Since they're not really very visible and the quality is quite poor on these, this type of video delivered over the web, I do encourage you to go and print the slideshows. And once you pull up a slideshow and you hit print, notice the two arrows there I've put in on that uh, printer dialog page, you can choose handouts and have it print three slides per handout and then your printouts will look like this. It uses less paper and it gives you a nice format that you can take notes if you would like to. Our textbook is very important in this course. It is called Public Relations, a Values-Driven Approach by Guth and Marsh, and that's Pearson Publishers. It is the fifth edition, and that is very important, the fifth edition. So there has been an, an upgrade in textbooks recently, and I do not recommend that you try to get by with an earlier edition. I've given you two options here for how you can purchase the textbook, and I chose the textbook for a number of reasons, and it is not the most expensive textbook. The cheapest option is to gain electronic access, and what they'll do is they'll rent electronic availability to you for 180 days, which is plenty more time than the course takes, and that costs about $36. One of the vendors you can use for that is CourseSmart. There are a lot of vendors that you can purchase electronic access to the textbook, but this is one that previous students have had good success with. Also, the book is available in paper format, and that does cost more. It's about $67 from Amazon.com. And uh, either one of these options works just as well. It's whatever you are comfortable with. Um, the electronic version is functionally a PDF version of the paper-bound book. So there's no difference in content that you'll receive depending on which of these options you choose. <clears throat> I am going to talk about using your textbook because I want you to be successful in this course. And while many of you are seasoned college students very good at using textbooks, this is a 100 level course and we can always learn how to use our textbooks better. We've all had experiences where we've sat down and read something and three or four pages later we realize that mentally we have failed to process any of it and we need to repeat it. And we've all had situations where we've studied and then we're very frustrated when we fail to recall that information that we went over. So I am going to provide you some advice on how to use your textbook to help you be more successful in this course. So this textbook has many features that are very useful to you. And one of those features is the table of contents. 
Before you sit down to read a chapter, go look at the table of contents. In the front of the book, every chapter, is they provide very detailed outline of what that chapter contains. Also, each chapter at the very beginning has objectives. Take the time to read the course objectives before you start really studying the chapter. Again, at the beginning of every chapter, the authors also provide key terms. Take a few moments to review the key terms. Every chapter also provides a summary, and I recommend that you go read the summary before you read the chapter. That's right. So, all together, if you look at the table of contents, review the course objectives, read and contemplate the key terms, and read the summary, those four activities, if you do those before you actually start reading the chapter, that's previewing the main ideas of the chapter. And in fact, at that point, you've been exposed to the main idea of the chapter four times. So take the time to preview before you start to read. So after you preview the chapter, you're ready to read, which is step two, and pause and reflect, which I put in there as step two and a half. Your textbook gives you some good opportunities to pause and reflect. During the chapters, the authors provide things called quick checks, which is a good way to stop and review the ideas that you just covered, quick breaks, and also memos from the field. So as you read, stop, pay attention, and contemplate those ideas that you're processing. And then the third step in the process is review. And your book also provides you some aids to review, including discussion questions and case studies. So that is the approach that I recommend you take to your textbook. First, preview it, and at that point, you've been exposed to the ideas four times. Read it, exposed to the ideas for the fifth time. Pause and reflect, exposed to the idea for the sixth time. And then review, exposed to the ideas for the seventh time. And if you will take the time to really process your textbook material that way, you will find that quizzes are easier, you recall the information better, you understand the big ideas in ways that they won't just be random access memory, but they'll stick with you for a while. Those ideas will come up when you make observations of the real world and media and public relations that you see and practice every day. And I genuinely think if you'll take the time to follow that approach to your textbook, you'll find that you can be more successful in this course and in other courses that really rely on textbook information. So in this introductory video lecture, I hope that I've been able to explain some key details that will help you do well in this course, what this course is about, what I hope you achieve, the course objectives, how you earn points in this course, the online environment, using announcements or tweets to keep up with class news, how to use files and contents, how to print slides. Uh, it's very important to be timely. Do print that schedule out that you can find in your introductory folder. And finally, I provided a step-by-step -step guide to how to work with your textbook most efficiently. Now, my name again is Joy Gordon, and if you want to contact me this semester, please do. I'm very available through email, which is Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, like the jewelry stores, at ksu.edu. Once again, I'm glad you've decided to take Fundamentals of Public Relations, and I'm looking forward to a great semester.